In the darkest depths of the Feywilds, where shadow melds with the worlds above, creatures lurk in every crack, crevice, and crag they can hide themselves in, for they often don't wish to be seen by the eyes of mortals. There are even legends of places hidden in plain sight, areas rich in magic and treasure, everything the mortal hearts of men could possibly desire. Yet, for some reason, no one can seem to remember the location of these grottos of wealth. Noble warriors have ventured forth, only to return, not knowing how they got back or where they were, should they return at all for that matter. Truly, some questions are better left unanswered. Now it is very possible that some of these adventurers simply got lost along the way, but it is equally possible that they were made to do so. Hello and welcome to Monster of the Week, the show where we dig up old creatures from past editions of Dungeons and Dragons and other tabletop games and bring them to light and convert them to 5th edition for use in your current 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons games. My name is Josiah, also known as Dungeon Dad, and today we're taking a look at a creature that has been in just about every version of D&D, although it goes by many different names. If you're looking at AD&D, or even the second edition Monstrous Manual, you will see it appear as the Obliviax, then as the Obliviax Memory Moss, then simply just as Memory Moss, and then later in fourth edition as Oblivion Moss. It's like people just can't seem to remember what this creature is called, which is honestly quite fitting when you look at it because this nasty little plant creature is something much more than it seems at first glance. This, I believe, might actually be the first tiny creature I've ever covered on this channel, and it is extremely unassuming. It is a tiny patch of black moss that, while it's not moving or actively doing anything, is completely indistinguishable from a regular patch of black creeping moss that you would find in pretty much any forest or swamp. However, the Obliviax is very much an intelligent creature, and it has the uncanny ability to steal the memories of creatures that pass near it. And not just a random memory here or there, but the last 24 hours of everything you've experienced can be wiped clean in but a moment. As you can imagine, this causes a lot of confusion for someone to suddenly just be in the middle of a forest and not remember anything since breakfast the day previous. But on top of that, what it does with those memories is truly where the danger lies. While the Obliviax can only move up to five feet, it can use those memories that it steals from other people and creatures that walk by as a source of fuel. And what it does with that fuel is it creates creatures we refer to as mosslings. These mosslings appear as small humanoid-like figures that have a striking and eerie resemblance to the figure of whatever creature was those memories were stolen from in order to facilitate the mosslings' creation. Now these mosslings will of course defend the memory moss that created them, but what is really interesting is what happens when the Obliviax memory moss uses this ability on a prepared spellcaster. Now many if not all classes have at least some kind of option that allows them to cast spells, but wizards, druids, clerics, and paladins are different and that they are prepared spellcasters, which if you're not fully up and up on your D&D terminology, that essentially means that they don't just know their spells. They have access to a broad range of spells, and every morning, whether it's through prayer or some other type of ritual, they memorize the spells that they want to be able to cast that day. So with these spells committed to memory, they venture out ready for whatever challenges await them until they rest again and have a chance to change up their spells if need be. Which would mean if they lose their memory from the past 24 hours... Exactly. They lose access to all those spells that they painstakingly committed to memory that morning. So suddenly your powerful wizard, who's usually the biggest damage dealer in the party, is reduced to nothing but cantrips and a stick. And not only do the unsuspecting victims of the memory moss lose these prepared spells, but the mosslings created with that juicy bit of stolen memory can then cast the spells that the victim knew. So the created mosslings themselves aren't too powerful on their own, but if they're created using the memory of a wizard who had some nasty spells on deck for the day, they could be incredibly dangerous. And if your group happens to be unlucky, unprepared, or both, 
This could all happen before we even roll initiative. Speaking of which, let's talk about just what these mossy memory manipulators are capable of in... So the ability to create these mossling creatures is of course their main offensive ability in kind of the whole shtick when it comes to the Obliviax. Now this ability is on a recharge, so it's not like it's going to be something that the Obliviax is going to keep doing every single turn. Unless, of course, it gets very lucky and your players get very unlucky. So, it's a tiny moss that can move five feet every turn. What is it going to be doing between those turns where it's stealing memories and creating more minions? Well, it has a couple of options. While they digest their delicious meal of memory, they can use another ability called Scramble Purpose. The target takes some psychic damage and, of course, gets a chance to make a wisdom save to cut that damage in half. But if they fail that save, the Obliviax can also force that creature to use its reaction to move 25 feet in any direction of the Obliviax's choosing. This, of course, is terrible for the victim because not only did they just take some psychic damage, but now they're being moved in a place they weren't planning on being moved to, and their reaction is also used up as well. This ability ranges from kind of annoying in a setback in combat to potentially devastating depending on where this battle is taking place. If you have any environmental hazards set up or there are other creatures involved in the combat, that extra movement could be terrible for whatever creature is being forced to move. I also find this ability extremely thematic for kind of a mind controlling plant. It also has another ability that's kind of interesting and functions in a similar way. The target takes a little bit less psychic damage, but they do get a chance to make a wisdom save to cut that in half as well. But if they fail their save when it uses Mind Scour, the Obliviax is effectively invisible to that creature. Which I think is really interesting, because the moss is basically erasing information about itself in that creature's mind, which is really cool. Now this ability to make itself invisible will be exceptionally useful against spellcasters, because while it might be able to absorb away their big powerful spells, most spellcasters, if not all of them, do have access to some cantrips. One cantrip in particular is going to be exceptionally dangerous for the moss, and that is of course Ray of Frost. Now most plant type creatures have vulnerability to either fire or cold or both in some cases, but the moss has a huge glaring weak spot, and that is an extreme vulnerability to cold. It doesn't take double damage from cold or even quadruple damage from cold. If it takes any cold damage at all, it just straight up dies. Now this is a pretty huge glaring weak spot, but it turns this pretty dangerous creature for its CR level of 3 into an interesting puzzle encounter. Because if your party is going through a forest where they're encountering many of these moss creatures, possibly even several at the same time, it's going to be really treacherous, really difficult, and potentially deadly for them. However, if they are able to figure out either through research, experimentation, or just by chance, that these creatures will die when they take any amount of cold damage, it creates this nice little dynamic puzzle for them to figure out in battle. Maybe they don't even figure out that it has a weakness to cold, but just that they are aware it has some kind of weakness, and through their own experimentation they'll probably try fire first, which will be effective at burning it, but if they try cold at any point, they'll then learn that it actually just instantly kills this creature. You could even rule if you wanted to that cold damage doesn't instantly kill it, but causes it to go dormant, which might allow for some interesting roleplay or applications of the memory moss if the players want to take it somewhere and reactivate it or do something along those lines, that's up to you. But this big glaring weak spot is not something a lot of monsters have, so it creates a really interesting situation for your players to potentially get themselves in. Now one other thing I'd like to mention is it's sure to come up that your players will want to try to figure out how to get those memories back, or if that's even possible, and it is. All the players have to do is eat the Obliviax, while it's still alive. Now it's a tiny creature, can't move very fast, that shouldn't be too difficult for one of them to just scoop it up and eat it. Now of course this doesn't come without a consequence, if a creature eats a living Obliviax they have to make a constitution save, and if they fail they are poisoned potentially for a few days. But nothing life-threatening, and they'll regain all their memories of the past day, along with any spell slots that they lost on top of that. So it's a pretty decent trade-off, and if they're immune to poison and diseases for some reason, or they have a paladin in the party, even better. Now whether or not they're able to figure that out just through trying it, or you give them that information through nature checks, or whatever it is you do, it's again another interesting dynamic for how this creature might be used outside of combat. Now if this sounds like a creature you'd like to use in your own D&D game, you can find the stat block and everything you need to run it in the description below. It's all there in a Google document. 
But you might be wondering, how exactly do you want to deploy this moss in your world? And I've got a few ideas on how we might do that, so let's take a look at some... So one of the big uses of memory moss in the canon explanation of this creature is that it's often planted by fey creatures in the fey wild in places they don't want mortals trespassing. Of course it can act as a sort of guard to defend a place against trespassers, but it also has the added benefit of making anyone who escapes forget the location of the place that they just were. And to me that's one hell of a deterrent that works in the natural world which is not a super common thing. If you're running an Underdark campaign as well, you could use this as kind of a supplementary plant to all the weird Underdark fungus like the Shriekers and other kind of insubstantial monsters that are ultimately deterrents and obstacles to be overcome. And it could totally be used in the same way by druids who are trying to protect a grove. It would make perfect sense to me for a druid circle to have memory moss kind of planted around the outer perimeter of their grove. I mean, maybe you've even got some of this stuff growing on the side of a Trent that's in a symbiotic relationship with the memory moss and they work together. And maybe a good plot hook for introducing this in kind of a random encounter is that the party finds a lost adventurer in the middle of the forest or the Feywild, and this person has no recollection of how they got there. They don't remember anything from the past day. They're just in the middle of this forest and they can't find their way out. Of course, this ultimately leading up to an encounter with the memory moss. But where I think this creature really shines is when it's used as a sort of tool, possibly against its will or in conjunction with an agreement it has set up with some kind of character, a villain, or a good guy, however you decide to spin it, to be used as anything, really. There are so many different uses for this creature. It could be used as an interrogation tool by a horrible villain who uses the memory moss to steal the memories of his captives, and then he eats a piece of the memory moss and is able to gain that information. So it doesn't matter if they're telling the truth or lying, he'll be able to see things through their own mind's eye and know what's really been going on. Or maybe the players decide to do this against some kind of villain that they need to get information from about something that's happened in the past 24 hours and they do that exact same thing but to an NPC. The only stipulation here is it does only reveal the past 24 hours of that creature's memory so it could yield some interesting results or incomplete information. And also depending on how you want to DM this out, it could give them a perfect recollection of everything that creature remembered from that time frame, or because it's not their own native memory, it might be kind of foggy and disjointed. They might not get the whole picture, but at least get some interesting clues. It's also possible while the players are traversing some sort of ancient temple or long lost ruin, a proverbial dungeon, if you will, they come across some dormant memory moss. Now in its current state, it's not a threat, it's nothing. It's just kind of like a dried up old plant. But maybe through, again, their own experience, knowledge they've had in the past, or through clues that are kind of left in this dungeon itself, they're able to realize that there might be more to this clump of dried plant than meets the eye. And through either some kind of magic ritual or just possibly pouring water on it, however you, again, want to DM this, I will leave this at your discretion, they're able to revive this memory moss into the creature. If they then choose to eat it, they would gain memories from the last creature that it stole memories from. And if they're in an ancient temple, this could be someone who lived, like, thousands of years ago. It could be a really interesting way to convey some information. They just see the last day in the life of the dead king who resides still as a skeleton on top of his throne. Another thing worth mentioning is much like all of the magical and psionic abilities that exist in D&D 5th edition, there are ways to not necessarily stop them but hamper them to the point where they're not very useful. And what I mean by this is literally putting them in a box. The Memory Moss, the Obliviax is unable to use its psychic abilities if it has a foot of stone or some kind of metal between it and its nearest target, or a thin sheet of lead. Which of course means there is a way to transfer this creature while it's still in its active state by simply putting it in a lead box. So perhaps your party is contracted out by a local township or small village near the edge of a forest, and they're told to go hunt down this monster. The only thing is, no one can seem to remember what this monster looks like, or even is. Anyone who's been sent after it has either never come back, or they simply just have no recollection of what they encountered, or even how they got there in the first place. However, the party is given a bag of provisions, identical to the one that the last group of monster hunters took out with them, because that group seemed to at least know what they might be dealing with, so 
The townsfolk figure their best bet is to equip the party with what the experts seemed to think was the correct provisions for this job. In the bag would be your typical stuff. Rations, torches, camping supplies, maybe a health potion or two, as well as a few oddities, maybe a couple of antidotes for poison, which isn't something you would always have, and of course a small lead box. The party might start to wonder just exactly what it is that they're hunting, but nonetheless eventually they venture into the forest. However, as you describe them venturing into the forest and the leaves crunching beneath their feet, suddenly you cut yourself off, maybe even mid-description of what you're explaining to them as they kind of venture into the wood. Suddenly you just shift your total turn of phrase and start explaining how they're waking up in the morning in the middle of their forest campsite as the sun starts to crest over the tree line. Players might be confused and just kind of look at you and maybe even ask what's going on, but don't stop your narration. Just continue to explain what they see and hear and smell around them as if they had just spent the last day venturing through the forest hunting this monster. Both the players and their characters will have no idea what's going on. And whenever you can create a moment that is shared by both the fantasy and the reality, it's kind of magical. It's something you don't get to do very often as a DM and when you can pull it off, it's amazing. The one key thing to describe here is that amid their camp, one of the items they find, of course, is that lead box that was packed in their provisions bag. And scrawled on the top of it, in the handwriting of one of the party members, it simply says, do not open. Now this should really get your players kind of a little freaked out maybe, but also get them thinking. See, of course, you as the DM know that they spent the last day hunting this memory moss and eventually were able to understand what was going on. They captured it in a lead box, but not before all of their memories were absorbed, maybe by this one, or perhaps there are several of them in the forest and they didn't realize. If you have a ranger in the group, maybe they're kind of checking for tracks and they see signs of a scuffle, that there was some kind of battle here, and they find heaps of moss along the ground, which are actually just the bodies of the mosslings that were created. Maybe some of the more astute characters, even as this was happening, realized what was going on and left clues for their future selves to find. Maybe they had a chance to jot something down on a piece of parchment really quickly, or they were able to do something that they would hope their future selves would be able to recognize as some kind of indication of where to go or what was going on. The adventure at this point just becomes trying to get back through the forest to town where they're safe and of course resisting the temptation to open the box. And if they do, we know what's waiting inside for them. The possible applications of this creature are near endless. Perhaps a crime syndicate uses it as a tool to totally wipe the memories of any of their members who complete some kind of job. So if someone in their group has completed an assassination, their memory is completely cleaned of it. So that if that person is then captured, they genuinely won't be able to tell the law what's happened, whether it be by magical means or otherwise. Same thing goes for bank heists or any type of crime that an organized criminal underworld would conceivably do can be erased and almost all evidence of it taken away forever. Any villain worth their XP can surely think of a hundred different ways to use this creature to their own advantage. And like so many of my favorite creatures, that's what I find interesting about the Obliviax, is that it can of course be a simple battle encounter if that's what you need it to be, but it can also be used as a tool or a hazard or a whole different array of applications for your fantasy role-playing game. And if you give something like this to your players, or just add the possibility of the Obliviax existing in that world, who knows how they're going to make use of it, and I'm sure endless shenanigans will ensue. So if you've ever had this creature used on you by a DM that you've played with, or you've been a DM who's deployed this in the past, I would love to hear about it in the comments below. Even if you just have some ideas starting to form about how you're going to use this in your game, Definitely tell us all about it. I look forward to reading the comments section every time I put up one of these videos. And of course, as I said, the stat block is in the description below. So if you want to use it, everything's all there for both the Obliviax and the Mossling as well. And of course, if you are one of my lovely patrons, you can get the Monster Manual style 5th edition stat block on the Patreon page as well as in the Google Drive. And there's a link to that up there as well. And if you have any suggestions for monsters from past editions of D&D or even from other systems that you would like to see me cover on this channel, maybe you have a hidden gem from Starfinder that you think is criminally underused, or perhaps something from AD&D that no one's ever even heard of, tell me about it in the comments, tell me about it on Twitter, tell me about it on Discord. Whatever is your preferred way of getting in contact with me, definitely let me know. I will add it on the list. I will most certainly check it out and maybe you'll see it in a Monster of the Week video in the future. 
In any case, I do just want to say thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you like what I do here and you want to support the channel, the biggest thing you can do is just subscribe and tell your friends. So thank you so much, guys. I do appreciate it, and I will see you in the next video. Until then.